I'm, I'm really quite anxious now. In about two hours, we're gonna cross one of the strictest and most dangerous borders in the world. And here we have 200 gigabytes of everything we filmed over the last month. So if they find it, we're gonna end up in prison for sure. They've done it to other foreigners before us. Hello friends, I'm Joe. And for the past 40 days, together with my partner Lizu, we lived in one of the most mysterious countries in the world. Together with nations like Russia and North Korea, it tops the list of being the most sanctioned and politically isolated places on earth. And so today we want to bring you along to the other side of the Iron Curtain to show you the life that only a few have seen. And we're gonna do it by showing you the 10 biggest culture shocks and differences that we encountered while living in Iran during the nationwide protests. The first culture shock that we are going to talk about is also the first one that we encountered after entering Iran. What's happening there? I'm becoming a conservative woman and we just got married. I'm becoming a conservative woman. And to put it shortly then, every couple in the Islamic Republic has to be married. Dating and even showing public affection is forbidden by law. First extremely weird realization. Uh, I wanted to grab Lisa's hand. Usually when we walk on the street we hold hands. But then I remembered that public affection in Iran is not okay. So... <sighs> and breaking this law can get you arrested and even whipped as a punishment. So to protect ourselves from unwanted attention and trouble, we decided to lie about our marital status. Remember guys, we are married now. And this law actually goes so far that legally you can't even book a hotel room as a couple if you don't show the marriage certificate. But what do you guys think? Was it okay for us to go against our own moral compass and lie about that thing to keep us out of trouble? Or should we have told the truth? Well, anyways, that's the first one. Now let's move on to the second thing on the list. Everyone in Iran is a criminal. From the first point, you probably realize that a lot of laws in Iran are quite strict and even outdated. And due to this, it is very common for locals to break those laws. For example, one of those laws is about the strict dress code in the country. Especially in big cities, we could see a lot of women who were not wearing the mandatory headscarf. It was really amazing to see the bravery of those women, as the punishment for such crime is again quite harsh. But this definitely wasn't the only law that locals were breaking. Iran is known to have one of the strictest censorship on internet, social media, news, and pretty much everything that has to do with Western media is banned. But as it turns out, it doesn't stop the locals. All of them had accounts on those banned social media sites. And even more surprising was that all of them were like hackers in, in Western sense. They had like 10 different VPNs on their phone and they knew how to bend the rules, how to access the information from outside world. So it was quite the shock to us that Iranian people were at times more up to date with what was going on in the outside world than we, for example. Okay, but as we're already talking about the Iranians, then let's have a closer look of what this mysterious nation is like. They absolutely hate toilet paper. Guys, I'll be honest with you, in my eight years of traveling the world, Iranians are the first nation that truly dislikes toilet paper. I asked a few of them about it and the answer was always the same. They told me that it is disgusting that toilet paper is pretty much just rubbing everything around your butt that you should wash off in the first place. And when I started to think about it, I kind of realized that they might have a point. But well, still, I'm a big believer in toilet paper and they didn't convert me. And if anybody's wondering what the actual toilets look like on this side of the world, then uh, it's literally a hole in the ground. There is no seat, there is no pot, there's just a hole. 
And then, instead of toilet paper, there is this. But now enough with the potty talk. And uh, let's talk more about the locals. And another thing that we really did not see coming was this. Islamic religion is losing its power. Before entering Iran, we had read online that 99.8% of Iranians are Muslim. So we expected to see a deeply religious and conservative nation. But this is definitely not the whole truth. Yes, there was a lot of beautiful mosques and shrines built in the name of Islam. But over the last years, Iranian conservative government has made it seem like their inhuman ways and words are the will of God. And for this reason, more and more of the locals are slowly losing their faith in God. There's no trustworthy statistic on this matter. But more than half of the people that we encountered told us that they don't believe in Islamic God as such. And when I asked them why do they still have Muslim written in their passport and documents, then they told us that if they didn't, they would be discriminated. It's just for their own safety. Well, besides their beliefs in toilet paper and God, there's actually more about Iranian locals. Extreme kindness and hospitality. So far on our journey from Europe to Japan, we have realized that the further east we go and the worst the situation of locals, the kinder they are. The locals we met in Turkey and Iraqi Kurdistan were just amazing and I didn't believe that it's possible. But Iranian hospitality is even greater. By the end of our 40 days here, we really got used to the fact that in food stores, we went to a store to load up, they didn't accept our money, like they sent us away. Gas station. I can't believe this. It literally says foreigners get free diesel. I don't know how that's possible. And even markets. We had to insist to be able to pay because they simply would not accept our money. It didn't matter if I went to a store to buy a bottle of Coca-Cola or, well, this gas station. They just didn't want their money and said gift. So we got so used to like offering our money and sometimes we even left the money and pretty much ran away from the store. And I'm sure we will forever remember the evening shared with locals, talking about life on this and the other side of the Iranian border. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Ah, friends, talking about locals really makes me quite sad because I know that after posting a video like this that has some parts that are not so pro-Iranian government, we can never enter this country again our lives would be at danger and it's sad because we really enjoyed this country it was beautiful and the locals were we felt welcome there but i guess let's move on before i get more melancholic they have cheapest petrol yet the craziest traffic with current economical situation talking about gas prices is a big topic all around the world but well not really in iran because as it turns out, Iran has one of the cheapest diesel and gas prices in the world. Depending on a place, the regular price was 1.5 to like 5 cents per liter. It just felt ridiculous being able to fill up your tank with 50 liters of diesel and pay less than 1 euro. Just crazy. Yet if you wanted to use the cheap diesel... Road trip! Every time you entered Iranian traffic, it felt like you were risking your life. So far in my life, Iran has the worst traffic I have ever seen. Please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. There's literally only two rules that matter. First of them, quite simple. Nobody wants to die. And second one is not that different either. Second one is that nobody wants to damage their car. And everything else depends on who has bigger balls and who wants to risk more? Please stop, please stop, please stop. Please stop. <laughs> he didn't want to stop. And without joking, I was afraid all the time. It's a true chaos, especially when you're coming from Europe. Okay, but let's move on. And as the seventh thing, I would like to talk about something that we Europeans 
are you still reading in our history books? Propaganda. Like many other closed and radical regimes in our world, Iran also strongly relies on propaganda. It's part of everyday life here, and every even remotely important government or religious building will have a picture of the supreme leader. The supreme leader, Admiral General Aladdin. Yeah, without the joke, his job title is actually the supreme leader. And another form of propaganda that we encountered is martyring the heroes of Iran. So they say martyred, which pretty much means die for Iran. Like this guy, he was the one who died in 2019 in a work of USA. If you have died in a way that you benefited the government in a war or as a spy in a foreign country, then uh, your picture is going to be put all over the streets. It feels weird, like seeing all of the faces of those dead people all around the street, but I guess it's part of the life here. But propaganda doesn't end on the streets. It starts at a very young age. And here's actually a picture I took from a first grader's textbook while visiting a local family. And you can see that they're learning words like desk, pencil, flag, and then, of course, one of the words they're going to learn is the supreme leader. And a high schooler from the same family had to study everything about Iranian weapons in a subject called in case uh, of military is needed or something like this. So they're preparing their kids for war at a very early age. Friends, seven things are done and I must admit that like choosing the 10 most shocking things was hard because the whole Iranian culture is really quite different. But for the eighth one, I want to talk about something that Iran is world known for. Alcohol is totally banned. It's really not a huge secret that the alcohol in the Islamic Republic of Iran is banned because 1400 years ago their prophet heard it from God that alcohol is bad for you. And in a way he was right. We all know that alcohol is not good for your health. But what surprised us is how they have solved this problem. Every supermarket we went has a huge shelf of non-alcoholic beers and wines. And I must say that I really liked this part of the culture. Like choosing those alcohol-free beers still gave us uh, the dopamine, like you're looking for the right thing, you try different tastes. So today I'm gonna try out pomegranate non-alcoholic beer. You relax in the evening and drink it, but next morning there's no hangover. So that was really quite nice. But going even deeper into that topic, then like I said, Iranians are criminals. And getting alcohol is really not that hard. The shopkeeper saw that we are buying those um, beer-like things. And uh, he was like, I got the real thing as well, you know. It's hidden away under there. So, <laughs> as it turns out, you can buy alcohol. You can get your hands on alcohol quite easily. A lot of families have like small distilleries in their home where they make homemade wine and like moonshine. It really tasted quite horrible. But if you like the Western brands, it's not hard to get those either because there's just so huge black market due to the rules that the people don't like. Did I fall to the advertising? It was calling me, you know? We got two more things on the list. And the ninth thing is something that I think no one expects when going to Iran. Everyone here is a millionaire. Yes, you heard correctly. Everyone in Iran is a millionaire. Okay, that's the funniest thing. There is a 41 million rials here. But this of course is because the exchange rate of rial is so bad. You think Christmas shopping is expensive in your country? We just spent 10 million rials buying food for Christmas. Which is 25 euros by the way. And I must say that although I have left Iran, I have kept this in my wallet. It's just 
pretty cool to have like a million bill in your, in your wallet. So from now on, I'm always gonna be a millionaire. But uh, this is actually not what I wanted to talk about in this topic. What I wanted to tell you is about how card-based is this society. Without a joke, Iran has the most card terminals I have ever seen. From a vegetable salesman on a market to a tea vendor who like pushes around this card or even a donation box in a mosque, all of them have card terminals. There is a catch though. Cards from the rest of the world don't work here because of the sanctions. So for us, it meant that we constantly had to carry around about like 40, 50 million in cash. And for a lot of vendors, it was a problem because they were used to cards. Everybody had it and it just shows how much potential this country has. It's ready to be a really modern and beautiful place. But yeah, there's just this one thing on the way. Alrighty, but we have made it. One more thing to go. Iran is so freaking huge. Before entering this country, we really didn't know how it was gonna look like. And we didn't even know how big it was. To put it in perspective then, Iran is as big as Portugal, Spain, France and Germany all combined together. In just a bit more than a month in this country, we managed to see snowy fields, rainy mountains, hot desert, lush forest, rich history, and extremely beautiful seaside. And most of the time, we found ourselves thinking, how is it possible that there's no other tourists here? And well, then we realized that, yeah, of course, we are in Iran. Friends, that was our first video from Iran. Now you probably realized why have we been gone for almost two months. There was just no way to talk to you, no way to post this video. And I'm super glad to be back. I'm super glad that you guys are still here with us. And in the next one, we want to tell you a story how we almost ended up in Iranian prison. But until then, go ahead and check out this playlist here to see our adventure from Europe to Japan so far. And I will see you in a little bit less than a week. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye.